All right, in class we did an exercise where we thought about Ileana and this, this proprietress of an ice cream parlor who had been breaking even and suddenly her licensure fees are doubled, increased, her fixed costs go up by a lot is the point. Um, so let's think about how we analyze that in this side-by-side -side framework where we examine what happens in the ice cream market and in the, for Ileana, the ice cream firm. And I've, I've imported my generic template that I've shared with you on that Moodle slide. So let's modify it so we can um, treat this case. Let's, the, the units and the quantity should be million pints per year, say. Uh, the price will be denoted in that was a dollars per pint. That's really messy. Sorry about that. I guess I could have used the text feature. Well, no, I can't because I'm in explain everything, not in OneNote. Uh, same units on the y-axis for the firm. But very importantly, I, I always use small q for the firm to remind myself that the firm is so much smaller than the market. We'll just have pints per year. This is an exaggeration, right? The Portland ice cream market wouldn't have thousands of firms, but but still, I'm, if we're we're assuming the competitive model, that's that's we're assuming that each firm is atomistically small. All right, I think I've labeled all my. I guess um, Port Portland ice cream. shop market, you know, 2019, say, and then Ileana's firm. And then we've got, you know, this base case describes the initial equilibrium. And um, now we're going to think about the short run impact of an increase in fixed costs. And then we'll think about the long run. And this is, we go step by step. We first, uh, uh, model the initial equilibrium, and next we analyze the short run effect. So let's let's do that next step. And the key to doing these problems is to do them step by step, really carefully, discrete steps. I'm going to change my pen color to blue so that um, we can really differentiate uh, the short run event from the base case, the ba the initial equilibrium. All right, we. An increase in fixed costs, any any cost event starts over in this firm setting, and then f the feedback on cost changes is from the firm to the market. Remember that firm marginal costs um, are the source of the industry supply curve. All right, so what happens when fixed costs go up? Are fixed costs part of marginal costs? No. Uh, they are, however, part of average total costs, and they go up. So average total cost is going to rise. And notice that if that's all that happens, I just show that as a new higher average total fixed cost. Now, because marginal cost hasn't changed, there's no short run market effect. So the market price doesn't change. So Output, firm output doesn't change. Price equals marginal cost. That, that occurs at the same level of output. But because the firm has these higher average total costs, they were breaking even before, but now they're not. So average total costs have risen from ATC naught to ATC one. Now, now average total costs are higher than price, so P minus ATC, the profit per pint of ice cream, is now negative, and Ileana is running a loss. And we might even label that just to be super clear, short run loss. And that's it. In, in, in some ways, well, maybe in all ways, these um, changes in fixed costs are the easiest cases to analyze graphically in the short run anyway, and, and I suppose the long run too. All right, so that's the short run. We always do these. We identify the short run effects. We wrap them up with by pointing out whether, whether the firm's making a profit or loss, and that leads us to the question, well, what's gonna happen in the long run? 
And in the long run, we'll assume that the, these licensure fees stay high. And in the long run, what's going to happen is some of these ice cream shops, it's not just Ileana, but all other proprietors of ice cream stores, um, some of them are going to say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm tired of this. I'm doing worse than my next best opportunity. I'm going to go do something else. I'm going to have a tea shop or a coffee shop or a you know, licorice shop, whatever people do. Um, anyway, in that, in that case, uh, there's going to be exit. And as exit starts to happen, we'll see upward pressure on price because this supply curve is counted up over all the firms in the industry. And if there come to be fewer firms in the industry, well, every exit shifts this supply curve to the left. Well, how, how much exit's going to have to happen before this market uh, stops seeing this exit? And the answer to that is that survivors are going to have to be back to breaking even before this exit stops. So we, we know that enough exit's going to have to happen to drive market equilibrium price back up high enough to where the survivors, pardon my less than perfectly horizontal lines, back to where the survivors are able to break even. So there's going to be fewer firms in this industry with this increase in licensing costs. And each of those is going to be producing a little bit more ice cream is the prediction of our model. And um, ice cream is going to be a little more expensive in this market or a lot more depending on how big the license fee increase was and there'll be less ice cream sold okay so that's that's the analysis and and i urge you to uh, practice this give yourself some scenario and, and go take it through start to finish and by the way this model the importance of this model is it shows us how markets um, attract goods to sectors where consumers value the product really highly relative to firm production costs and and resources leave sectors where um, buyers consumers value products less than the cost of producing them so that's how the market economy allocates resources among um, sectors in the economy it's quite a dynamic process it's changing all the time and um, that's a good thing a, a well-functioning market is going to see sectors that are shrinking, sectors that are growing all the time. All right, let's stop there.